And in the day's other news, it turns out that there was an eighth person present when Donald Trump Jr. met with a Russian lawyer last summer. The Washington Post and others identify the person as Ike Kavaladze. He works for the Russian real estate developer whose son suggested the meeting. The president's son acknowledges that he accepted because damaging information was promised on Hillary Clinton. Reports this evening say that President Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin had a second meeting at the G20 summit in Paris earlier this month. That is in addition to the more than two-hour session they held that was widely publicized. The second meeting had not been disclosed previously. The U.S. Treasury Department slapped new sanctions today on 18 individuals and groups tied to Iran's ballistic missile program. It came hours after the State Department again certified that Iran is complying with the letter of its nuclear deal, but not with the spirit. We'll have a full report later in the program. In eastern Ukraine, Russian-backed separatists have proclaimed formation of a new state. Rebel leaders said today that the new state will include areas they already control and ultimately ultimately, the rest of Ukraine. But Ukraine's president, Poroshenko, during a visit to Georgia, dismissed the declaration and called the separatists puppets of Russia. They are not political figures. We are confident that we reintegrate the Donbas, we reintegrate the Crimea, and we renew sovereignty and territorial integrity, no matter what Russia said. The announcement cast more doubt on the future of the 2015 ceasefire. China warned today of an all-out confrontation with India in a growing border dispute in the Himalayas. Each side accuses the other of building up troops along a contested region between China and Bhutan, an ally of India. The confrontation flared recently after Indian troops stopped Chinese workers from building a road in the area. Back in this country, officials today dropped two high-profile cases involving shootings by police. A Cincinnati prosecutor announced that he will not retry former university policeman Ray Tensing for a third time. Tensing was accused of murder and manslaughter in the killing of a black motorist, Sam Dubose, during a traffic stop. Two previous trials ended in hung juries. After discussing this matter with multiple jurors, both black and white, and um, they have to a person said to us that we will never get a conviction in this case. Separately, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, federal prosecutors closed a civil rights investigation into the death of James Boyd, a homeless man killed by police in 2014. They cited lack of evidence. California's signature climate initiative will stay in force through the, at least the year 2030. State lawmakers voted on Monday to extend the cap-and-trade program. It limits carbon emissions and lets polluters trade or buy emissions permits. The program had been set to end in 2020. On Wall Street today, the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 55 points to close at 21,574. The Nasdaq rose nearly 30 points, and the S&P 500 added one point. And there's word that China is censoring the Winnie the Pooh on social media. It's aimed at comic comparisons of the pudgy bear with President Xi Jinping. The forbidden list now includes widely circulated images of Xi strolling with then-President Obama in 2013, juxtaposed with Winnie the Pooh and Tigger, and from 2014, Xi shaking hands with Japanese Prime Minister Abe alongside an image of Pooh and Eeyore. Who knew?